Have you ever seen those photos that have stars of light and wonder how the photographer has got them? Well, in this video, I hope to show you my process for getting starbursts and why they happen. I'm going to attempt to take a picture that includes a starburst of that lamp that's about there in the picture. That one just there, you can see that. So I'm going to take a picture of that lamp, try to make it a starburst, and I'm going to potentially try to take a number of shots at various different aperture ranges to give you an idea of how I do it and, and what you would, you would expect. Uh, from various photos from various different apertures. I'm going to attempt these starburst shots using the Canon 400D that I've used in my previous two videos just to give you an idea that you can still get shots with starbursts even with a, an entry level 15 year old camera. To get the right exposure on this shot, I'm going with f22, an ISO 400 and a 25 second exposure. I've got f22, ISO 400 and 25 seconds. This gives me a long enough exposure and f22 is the right aperture for getting the best starbursts. But what I will do, I'll keep reducing the aperture and reducing the aperture and show the picture for each aperture value that I shoot from. As I mentioned before, this camera has a 12 and a half second timer so I'm going to use the 12 and a half second timer for each shot first picture taken and then people might be walking about in the scene but because it's such a long exposure that they you won't see them in the scene and they'll be blanked out that's the first shot at 25 seconds now I've gone down to f20 and 20 seconds one thing I can't um, have in my shot are cars that their, their bright lights go past I'm deliberately overexposing these shots slightly because the last time I was out taking photos with this camera when I underexposed it it provided too much noise. The reason you get these starburst effects is due to the diffraction of light through the lens and as you close your aperture ring to its lowest setting for instance f22 each of the leaves of the aperture ring leave little corners and the light goes through those little corners and causes the lines of light you see in the starburst. It's quite simple physics really. And this happens uh, whether it's in uh, F22 or F8 or anything, but when the aperture is opened wider, the impact or the effect is much less, so you don't see it quite as, uh, as clearly. You get these starbursts of light in all sorts of situations. Mainly, you see in the daytime, you see starbursts of the sun. Quite often, you see people posting pictures showing the, the sun coming through some trees and the, the, the contrast and the edges of the trees help to create that starburst effect. And obviously at night, as I'm out tonight, you get the starburst effect from the bright lights, the street lamps, the car lamps, lights in, in buildings, in floodlights, and that's quite often the place you get them. So there's loads and loads of opportunities to get these starbursts. Sometimes there's too many in a photo and you see a photograph covered with them and sometimes there's too little. At some images you see different numbers of lines in the starburst and that's because of the, the lens manufacturer. Some lenses have many more leaves which give you many more edges in the aperture ring and the more leaves, the more edges, the more lines you're going to get. Obviously the fewer leaves and fewer edges you get less lines and a, a smaller starburst. Thank you very much indeed for watching the video. I really hope that you've learned something and got something out of this video that, and you've seen how easy it is to take pictures with starbursts in. And if you like this video, I'd be really pleased if you'd give it a like. And if you really like it, I'd be super pleased if you'd subscribe to the channel. 
it's free, it doesn't cost you a penny and it's really, really easy. And thank you very much again and good luck with your Starburst photography.